Our next artist was profiled during our Visual Arts of South Asia Festival. Born in Bombay, India, she's a graduate of commercial art from India's prestigious Sir JJ School of Art. She immigrated to Canada in 1981 and currently lives in Mississauga. Creating a painting and why she had come alive is what motivates her. She creates large land waterscapes of beautiful places that she's visited around the world. She grew up at the Arabian Sea in Bandra, Bombay, India. Every morning on her walk to school, she passed a fishing village where she used to watch the fisher folk haul in their boats filled with fish. In the background, one could hear the lapping of the waves and the seagulls screeching. Seascapes and waterscapes have fascinated her since then and always bring back memories of the salty air and the colorful boats. She worked in the in-house art department of Pfizer Incorporated and won a national award for her artwork at a national exhibition. In Canada, she's participated in numerous exhibitions over the past 13 years. Her work can be found in Dubai, Australia, India, the US and Canada. Please welcome Myrna D'Souza. Myrna, it's such a pleasure to have you here. And it's so great to see, you know, this fascination with water and fish and how it uh, inspired you to begin your journey. So let's talk about that. So we know growing up, you're fascinated by your environment, but what really prompted you to start your art journey? When I was 10, uh, that was the only thing I was good at. And I used to show my work off to my neighbors and my friends. And one lady said to me, you should go to art school. And that's what really started it. Mm -hmm. So in your family, are you the only sort of creative person or did, did you kind of grow up with artists? I'm the only creative person, but right now, my children and my grandchildren are all very good at drawing. But it was my mother who influenced me. She's the one who sent me to art school and she was such a brave woman. She let me do murals on a wall. She was very encouraging. And what I took from her was that she said, when you do a painting, it should be like you're looking out of a window into a scene beyond. And most of my landscapes and seascapes are like you're looking out of a window. Mm -hmm. When you started painting, tell me about that. What age were you and uh, what, what was your first creation? Do you remember? I, I was an art student. I was at JJ School of Art and I was around 18 years old. And at that time, India had a famous painter called M.F. Hussain. He kind of did uh, uh, modern uh, cubist work and very colorful. And I was so enamored. I used to copy his work frame it and hang it in my living room. And he was the one who really started me on my art journey. Mm -hmm. And when you did your first painting, what was the reaction like? Oh, uh, people used to love to come over and look at it. And there was one particular guy, whenever he visited, and if I wasn't home, he turned the painting the back facing. So I'd know he came over. Yeah, it had different effects on different people. You were mentioning that your mother always told you that when you paint, it should seem like you're looking out of a window. So whenever somebody comes to one of your exhibitions and looks at your paintings, is that the feeling that you want them to be sort of transformed to a different place? Perhaps that they've never exactly. traveled to? Exactly. And that's where my world travels have helped. We've been to many beautiful places around the world and my husband takes pictures and I let him know exactly what I want. He's a good photographer. So I bring those back home and I make sketches and I take it from there. Mm -hmm. But my inspiration comes from places I've been to and Mississauga is so beautiful. We have a lot of parks. We go taking pictures of flowers in the spring or summer. And I've done a couple of paintings based on those pictures.
walk us through the process. So let's say your husband took a photo or let's say you went for a walk and you saw something really stunning that you're like, I would love to draw this. You come home and then how does that process begin and how does it end? How long does it take you? Uh, well, let's say I, he's taken the picture, we print it and then I make sketches and then I determine what size canvas I want to make. And most of my paintings are pretty large. Then I go to the art store, get the supplies. And then once my hand holds the brush or the palette knife and dips it in the paint, and then magic happens. That's what people want to know. What, how does that magic happen? You just let your hand do its thing? It's like or how do you figure out how you're going to create this photo and make it come alive in a painting? It's, it's intuitive. It's inside. It's, it's just that, you know, it's not something you can say. It just, it happens. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of the paint to the canvas and that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you're mentioning that you get influenced by just the beauty of the world, right? By the various places that you've traveled. Are there perhaps uh, other artists or influences that really impact your work? In recent years, it was Howard Behrens. He that he does exactly what I'm doing now. He, tra he used to travel a lot, take pictures, come home and take elements from different photographs and compose his paintings. Uh, actually, he may be the father of G. Clay Prince. He's the one who started it. So if you see his pictures, he only uses a palette knife and he's, his colors are so beautiful. He's an expert in that. Sadly, he passed away a few years ago. Okay, so he's really influenced your work. Now, we know with the pandemic, many artists have been impacted. So can you talk about your own experience? How were you impacted? During this time, you know, the art supply stores were closed and I prefer to go. I don't like buying online. I like to look at what I'm buying, choose the canvases and so on. So I worked on stuff. I had a lot of unfinished work. I worked on that. I did a lot of research. I looked at a lot of videos and I made a list of things I want to do in the future. So I have a whole list and I'm ready to go now that the pandemic's almost reached the end. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, we want to know about this list then. So let's say five, 10, 15 years from now, what kind of work are you hoping to put out there? Uh, my style has changed a bit. I'm going to do work that's more loose in the sense it's more flowing. I'll be using the palette knife more than I use brushes. Uh, paintings with brushes and fine work takes a lot of time. I want to do smaller paintings and with more impact. That's my plan for the next few years. Smaller paintings with a bigger impact. Yes. Okay, you got to explain that because that is a big sentence, a bigger impact. So what is the impact you're hoping to make? It'll be the strokes that I use. I'll spend less time on the paintings. It won't be as detailed as my current paintings. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it'll be more colorful and more alive. More alive. Okay, I like that. That's good especially during the pandemic, right? Um, Marina, let me ask you, you know, we always talk about what it's like to be creative here in Canada, what it's like to be an artist. And, you know, right now, obviously you've had many years of having your art showcase, but let's talk about the future. Let's talk about your legacy. So if anyone were to, let's say, open up a time capsule that you put together, let's say in 50 years from now, they opened it up, they got to see some of the items you put on there, what do you hope people understand about who Myrna D'Souza is as an artist and what her paintings were all about? When they opened up that time capsule, I'd like them to be intrigued by what they see, but my work should still look current. I hope they will like it enough to hang in their own homes.